Hi and welcome to another episode of the Getting Things Done podcast from Vital Learning. I am Morten Røvik as always and as always I'm here with my good friend and colleague Lars Rotskill Henriksen. Privet Lars. Privet Morten, good to see you as always and it's always good to be with our listeners and viewers out there. We always start off with a quick reminder of the purpose of this podcast, which is to help you learn GTD or become even better GTDers. We hope that today's episode supports you in that. If you are new to GTD, we always recommend you go back and listen to the first episodes, episodes one through six, to get an introduction to the basics of GTD, the five steps. Today's episode number is number 118, and today's episode is our yearly tools check-in episode. It is, it is, and uh, I am sure that's going to be a very good one. And uh, <laughs> as always, we are not going to talk about um, uh, tools we are not using, but what we are using and that we can recommend to you um, as something Lars and I both like. Um, exactly. But we have some more to say in the intro, Lars, about some mm, things that we are going to mention to you. So, <laughs> can you tell me what that is? Please tease. <laughs> please tease. Yeah, exactly. So, so we have the, you know, we've been working behind the scenes. We spoke a bit about this at the summer camp, and Morten and I have been talking about this for, for quite a while. Um, we have the GTD Masterclass Retreat being planned right now. So this mm -hmm. is uh, a weekend with um, Morton, with me, um, and we have David Allen joining us as well. It will mm -hmm. be a fantastic weekend. We don't have the location set yet, but uh, we are looking at um, some very, very nice locations in, in Denmark to spend a mm -hmm. fantastic weekend um, in the name of GTD. Um, we'll be working with people individually. We'll be talking together. We'll be looking at the higher horizons. We'll be, yeah, we have so many great ideas and we have a fantastic weekend being being planned right now. It's not open yet mm -hmm. for signups. We're not ready yet to to commit to anything, but we wanted to, to share that. Um, with, uh, with you out there. Yes, indeed. Um, what we are looking at is an exclusive event for people who want to uh, learn getting things done, um, who want to specifically work on their higher horizons so that you can get to make sure that you are on track with your purpose, values and principles for your life and your, your work. And um, we want this to be uh, you know, something that's going to help you uh, change or maintain correct direction uh, in your uh, in your life and work and to help you up your game in getting things done. And there will be ample opportunity to be coached by either Lars, me or David, all, all three of us during that weekend. So, um, yeah, we are looking at some very nice places now. So stay tuned, more information <laughs> to follow. If you want to already know that some people that we talk to says, I don't care what it costs, I don't care when it is, sign me up. <laughs> if, if you are interested um, in, uh, in this, um, please send us an email at uh, podcast at whitehalllearning.dk so that we can uh, put you in our um, list of people to be contacted when we have some real information about this. So podcast at whitehalllearning.dk for information when it um, when it arrives and uh, follow the podcast we will talk about this more later yeah absolutely yes. good lars what do we have on our agenda more than today <laughs> i you see i use lars no, as my system <laughs> yeah, no, I'm happy to take on that that role today. Um, mm. It's um, just reflecting on you know the the podcasts as we decrease the uh, the frequency of the podcast. It's mm. it's even more of a treat because we always it's not because we didn't enjoy doing these uh, these episodes. We spoke about that last time we recorded the mm. latest episode, and we're I'm sure we'll do the same today. Is that they're a lot of fun, so it's kind of that 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 special chocolate. Now you only get it once a month, so it's even more special. Now. So I'm just um, you know enjoying uh, enjoying recording these uh, as we mm. as we go along. Um, no, like we said in the beginning, it's um, it's tools check-in time. We did this in 2021. We did it in 2022. We did it in 2023, around October, I think. So it makes sense to do it now in, in 2024. And um, yeah, at least I did some sort of a, a quick brainstorm earlier today on 
what does it look like today? And just also reflecting back how, how much has changed, which perhaps that's our starting point. Not much has changed, I think, since last time, at least for me. Mm. Um, we'll, mm. we'll go through all of the, the different things that we, that we use, but I'm just curious, Martin, mm. if, you know, uh, has your setup changed a lot since last time or is it close to the same as, as last year? It's fairly close to the same, but it has evolved. So, and uh, mm. maybe Ooh. encompass some new um, ways of doing things that uh, has been good. So, yeah. so you and you have a kind of like a, an agenda for us, haven't you, that we will walk through? Yeah. So, so well, mm -hmm. the, the place I, I started was um, on, on the, uh, I called it hardware. I don't know if it really mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, captures everything. But, you know, when I, when I looked Physical at Physical objects. The, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because hardware. it started off being very hardware computer centric, but really oh. also the, the physical tools are very much the same. I have my good old capture wallet still be, still mm. being used less and less, but I still have it in my bag and it's not mm. going anywhere because there are just those times and perhaps, you know, a few years ago it was on a weekly basis and now it's more every month, every quarter that I use it, but it's still for those specific moments where I need it when I'm in a, you know, delivering a seminar and I just, ooh, I, I'm just reminded of something while someone is doing an exercise, I have to capture this. That's just still the perfect tool. So that's when I go to my bag, I'll find my good old capture wallet, I'll write something down and put it in my, my good old, uh, you know, portable entry, I think we used to used to call it mm. when we had it in the seminar. Um, so we still have that in my bag as well as my support material one. And I have a to home uh, tray as well that I for stuff mm. that I need to to bring to home and, and drop off the drop off there. Um, but otherwise here at the uh, desk, it's my, I still have the one from GTD Summer Camp 2022. We, we made, oh, okay, I don't yeah. think the white balance caught it, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's the, uh, the pad that we, we gave to participants uh, back then. Still mm. capture, still, still use that on a daily basis. Um, it's fun to see. I had a, a seminar recently with a lot of younger participants. I was, I was, um, definitely the oldest oldest one there and it was fun for for me to hear how they would use gcd and how it would would differ mm. where i'm still used to this they were very digital no no surprise there mm. but um, i'm still happy with my my paper here we have the same at home these just basic a6 uh, pads that we we use we have the wooden uh, in trays here both uh, you know inbox support material i uh, have the same ones at home the ones from uh, muji i think the name is is called really really like that um but but on that note um, one, one of the changes that has changed since uh, has has happened since last time was my a greater awareness of, awareness of pens and i know mm -hmm. there will be some some summer camp participants out there they will be very <laughs> eager and you know, will he join the fountain pen group and, and i'm not there yet but 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 i'm i'm starting to get it now um, because i had this experience at home where i was writing mm -hmm. something down and it was an old pen and it didn't work very well and it, mm. it just annoyed me as I was writing yeah. it down. So I just, you know, threw it out, picked up a new one and it was just so much better. And, and I noticed that change in feeling in how I, you know, how easy it was to actually capture mm. something. So yep. that, you know, that is now on my radar. I'm starting to learn fountain pen lovers. I'm, I'm, don't expect me to show up at, at summer camp 2025 with, you know, my <laughs> own set and the right one and the favorite really? one. And, and all that but but I'm, I'm working on it you know someday someday maybe i'll join the club but uh, but at least i i understand now the perspective and um it, it really does have an have a an impact so um mm -hmm. i think that's probably the the biggest change for me uh, when it comes to, to physical capture um what about mm -hmm. you no um i have um because of the the capture wallet has been discontinued um from our part and that it's, it's uh, the wallet itself for many is still something they use um i have um, found uh, you know a mini version of this um it is um it is a wallet um it's called it's from where is it from really it's from uh, the Bramant 18, 1928. The Bramante uh, 1928. It's, it is a, a double wallet oh, nice. with, uh, where you can have some cash. It's good when you travel if you need the cash. And it has uh, an inside um, part as well where I have um, my trusted uh, AirTag. Air 
Uh, no, what's it? What is it called again? Is it an air tag? Yeah, it air tag. Yeah, air tag. Uh, Couldn't see your credit card number, Martin. If you could, uh... <laughs> and you no, want I'm to see kidding. my credit card number? <laughs> yes, I will not give you that. Um, but uh, what I will show is that I have this very very small pen that I found. It's yay big, which is more like a um, the length of your index finger, and it's. Th I don't know, maybe two millimeter thick, and it has a. You can press and you can write. And what I've done is I put small uh, cards that I found that fits into the um, to the wallet. Um, I'm ran out of them now. I can't show you, but there's some more small cards that goes into one of the credit card slots, and, and that's enough for me to make uh, maintain you know um, an emergency note when I, uh, something occurs to me because I am one of those digital persons who <laughs> I use Siri a lot to capture into the reminders and um, mm. and I use Siri for both on my watch and my iPhone for for this so it's um, that's also part of my hardware but for captures uh, capturing I use talk about going old school I have gone pencil <laughs> a real old school <laughs> pencil with an eraser it's a um, Farber Castell grip 2001 uh, two and a half uh, HB this is the, the, the mm. I'm sure people will ask <laughs> what is this and I, I then I then use uh, one of the um, uh, the gifts that we got from David Allen Company many years back. It's an Exacunta Block Fuff, B L O C Fuff Exacunta. I'm sure you can, uh, you have this from the last episodes. We I have this changed. from, yeah, I think we have from yeah. earlier. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the reason I like this is it's, you don't have to, uh, one of the things I don't like with the paper um, notepads is that they are too thick for me the first time you write on it, it's like you write on the Eiffel Tower when it's at the end it becomes more comfortable and as you can see I can put as many or as, as uh, uh, few I like uh, to to the right height of the the writing instrument pad so a physical what uh, sorry and uh, capture sorry and um, I have a um, physical entry in the office uh, I do not have a physical entry at home but I have where I normally would sit my wife uh, put uh, right in front of me things I need to see <laughs> and I do too <laughs> so if there's something I need to do something about it goes there to be captured so it's, uh, it doesn't have to be a, a physical place that you use as an entry as long as you have a dedicated place for that to, uh, where, it, where it happens and where you will process it so um, I had a coaching client where there was so much paper in his office that the the staff around him knew to put it on his chair. So he just could yeah. not sit down without seeing it. Yeah. And yeah. so that was and, his inbox, and, at least when and, we started. Yeah, and he will, you know, the stacks of Harvey then becomes uh, evident because he will look at it and they will say, huh, what is this? Uh, I need mm. maybe to do something about it. Let me put it here so it doesn't go yeah. away. <laughs> I don't I don't lose it. Yeah. Yes. Um, and we, are we at capture tools now uh, or just physical objects? I'm not sure where to. Well, no, I was here. just curious about the physical uh, physical setup and just wanted to get back to the, the writing tools. Like I said, I am, mm. you know, not not at sort of a, anywhere near. I'm still a very much of a novice level, but the bad pens don't don't stay. Uh, they, they, they go out quickly. Um, no, the one I'm writing with is a, actually a crucial learning pen, um, but the reason I have that is why I wanted to mention it because I don't think we mentioned it last time, but I was in Berlin, I think since our last recording, mm -hmm. or did we yes. already mention uh, that I am That's now a news. master trainer in crucial mm -hmm. conversations as well. Yes. So we are both GCD master trainers. We can certify trainers in getting things done. Now mm -hmm. I can do the same in the crucial conversations. So yeah. um, really, really fun and uh, yeah, looking forward to, uh, to training more trainers in, in Denmark. So that was an easy way to sneak that in. That's why I wanted to yeah. get this. <laughs> <laughs> segue, no, I think if we, yeah. if, we stick to, if we stick to the hardware and perhaps go to the, the computer side of things, um, mm -hmm. not much has changed. I had the same Mac mini at the office, the old Intel box. I haven't uh, updated it because the uh, next version, the M1 
uh, Mac Mini that I bought afterwards doesn't support the dual screen setup that I have here at the office. So mm. had to uh, had to leave that at home where I have just a, a single screen here at the office. Still have my Canon DSLR. Still have my Elgato Light, basic Apple setup here. Um, very happy with my uh, uh, MacBook Air. I think the M2. I have that since my wife is still on maternity leave. That was her sort of computer that we bought. Um, I don't know if I can give that back to her <laughs> because is, uh, it is. <laughs> Does she it know is really that? Good. <laughs> she. I don't think we'll figure out now. If she listens. Um, you know, and these are really the, you know, famous words. I'll never need anything faster than this. Of course we will. But but it's in you know in reality it's it's so fast. It's so nice. You just mm. click on a program and an app and it just opens. It's it's just mm. there, and it's just such a, a pleasure to to work mm. with. Um, same watch, good old Apple Watch Ultra. Although I'm not too happy with Siri. Um, I, I she, it's it's too it's too slow too slow for me. So I've actually mm. set up um, and then use the, the memos app just to to capture mm. things so seems mm. to seem to work better for me. But that actually leads to me to the one thing I think that has changed, which is that I have the new iPhone 16 Pro. Mm. Um, but it hasn't impacted my workflow. <laughs> it, it is basically the same as the 14. Um, with all of the limitations that are there for, you know, what we can get in the EU when it comes to Apple mm. intelligence and things like that. There is not, not much that has changed. Um, it has an action button. I can connect mm -hmm. that to the memos app. Really nice that I can easily capture without even, even looking. So, so that's, mm. that's a help. Um, I think that the biggest change was that I set it up just, a. Tip. I don't know if it's even a tip, but it was a helpful thing for me to set it up as a new phone. Normally, I would just transfer, mm -hmm. you know, the old settings, everything set up. But setting it up as a new phone, it really was a pain. <laughs> you know, setting mm -hmm. everything up with all the digital ID stuff that you have, um, you know, driver's license, health, the insurance, and all the the ID uh, stuff happening. It really was. It really took a long time to set up, much longer than I thought. But it was helpful to revisit and sort of start from a clean sheet and you know set up the screen, set up the widgets set up everything the way that I wanted mm. with different focus modes, who can get through, what works, etc. cetera. Um, set a lot of things up with with the widgets now, shortcut setup, control center for, you know, warming up the car and, you know, preparing for meetings and all that stuff. Mm. It was nice to revisit and make sure that I have things set up the way that I, that I want. So um, mm. didn't really, again, change much about my workflow, but um, it was, a, that, that was a, a good way to, to revisit all of those decisions. Mm. How are you doing on the hardware side of things? Well, um, I also have the, the Apple Watch um, uh, Ultra, the first generation. Well, I'm super happy with it. And I don't understand why you think it is slow, because for me, it is not. So maybe you have slow data connection or something. I don't know. I'm uh, just impatient. That's just yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, no, but to capture it, it's just uh, the hold in the side button and said, remind me of, and then what you wanted to remind of. And if you have a location or a time you need to be reminded of this, you just say that and I'm reminded. So that's, that's cool. Um, hardware wise, I'm still on the iPhone 14 Pro. Um, I decided the 16 Pro didn't have anything that I felt I needed at the moment. So the, what I did need was a better battery. So I uh, did um, um, buy some happen chance the, the, um, the battery of the 14 Pro was d deprecated faster than I, I thought possible. But it was like um, 70 something percent battery, which is after two years is a little surprising. My wife has the 13 pro and she has more battery juice in that old uh, phone uh, <laughs> compared to the year younger uh, 14 pro so i changed the battery at um at um what do you call it uh apple premium reseller or something like that some uh, official so i get a good battery and um but i went through the same pain that you did but i did just um back up to icloud and then uh, download everything again, but you have to go through the logins for everything. <laughs> and I do understand I have too many apps on my phone. I have a project clean out the phone <laughs> of apps I don't need, but it is uh, it is a little difficult. I um, I do agree. Um, and, and it is a pain, but um, I like my setup, so I didn't go blank and then install one by one. I, maybe I should. That will be 
probably a better uh, if not, if it will not be faster, but it will be a better way to to clean all the old craft out of the phone. Mm. But mm. yeah, yeah. Um, so that's my hardware uh, mm. in the phone and the watch part, whatever. Um, and then in the hardware, the, oh yeah, uh, Max. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, well, I have an M M one um, MacBook Air, which I love. It's fast. It's uh, probably not as fast as the M2, but it, it is more, more or less instantaneously. Yeah. And the big leap up from the Intel Max um, when it comes to speed and uh, convenience. And um, I have an M2 Apple um, Mac Mini. Uh, I did that step before, and, and that has also been a really nice leap into the into the future. The M2 mm. is uh, is fast and that is really, you know, the the time you save from you start it or you you take it out of sleep. It's just and when you want to open a, an app, it's super fast. So I feel uh, blessed by hardware wise <laughs> when it comes to Max. <laughs> so um, yes, um, but, uh, I can't remember. You talked about Max and uh, watch and phone. Um, yeah, I think that's yeah. about it. Um, that's about all. All I use. Yeah. Um, you know, I use the uh, the MacBook Air for for presentations and seminars, and yeah, mm. just works nicely. Yeah, yeah. And, and I I remember one thing. I have a, a, a an anniversary to celebrate. Ooh. Yeah, because uh, back in 2014, 10 years ago. I bought uh, a uh, Microsoft Surface Pro. I think mm. it's Surface Pro 3. It's still with us and it's still working. <laughs> and that is my presentation PC. And uh, when I give my courses and uh, and uh, when we give uh, both GTD and Crucial Conversations, I use that for those presentations. And mm. and I use it also for when we do I do my the workshops in the. GTD courses when we sell a workshop included in um, Microsoft to do a calendar and uh, Outlook uh, and it works perfectly. It's mm. still fast and it's not bogged down and um, and I'm super happy because it's uh, the price now is into, you know, if you take 10 years, the price and divide in 10 years and then every month and then every week is like next to nothing. Every, every, mm. and, and it is good for nature. You know, the longer you can keep your tech without changing it or handing it down to someone. Well, handing it down, is not a bad thing, but um, buying new tech is, of course, something you and I have had uh, a past on. I know we are both uh, gadget, uh, you know, technol, uh, technol, uh, what do you call it? Uh, technoholic, holic, holics. Um, it's, um, but it is good to have something that really lasts. And um, I'm super happy with that. Uh, yeah, that's hardware wise. Yeah, no, and I should add that as well. I still have mm -hmm. uh, that. Obviously, we do the we do the same kind of um, setup activities. So so I'll frequently bring my uh, my surface. I don't think it's as old as as yours. Um, no, but yeah, absolutely it works, uh, works well. It's uh, mm. it's it's quite impressive. For all the Apple stuff that we talk about using it. So uh, yeah, it, it, it works yeah. well. Uh, the one the one thing that I really like about it is it doesn't have any bloatware. It doesn't have any, mm. you know, that's when you buy a, a PC, uh, non Microsoft PC, they all bundle it with a lot of crap. I'm sorry, but it's like things you don't need that, that slows the machine down over time. And um, I don't know why people put up with that, like antivirus and, uh, and uh, yeah. Being an old IT guy is kind of like a mystery to me why people put up. Of <laughs> I course, kind of kind of feel that old IT guy is putting his head up. You know why do you? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, grumpy, grumpy. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah. know what the status is today. It's been it's been too long since I since I saw mm. those uh, new pieces. Mm. But what I did install on my machines, if we transition now to to different capture tools or you know ways to ways to reach mm. you um 
Of course, we have our internal platforms where we use the Google Suite and we have the the rooms and the direct chat. Um, for for mail, I still use my Apple Mail client um, mm -hmm. on my on my Mac. Um, it's fine. It's it's good. I think it's it's pretty quick, which is something that is is critical to to me and the integration with the Apple Reminders list that we spoken about last year as well. So the ability to send that email, oh, I need a waiting for. I can drag that email over to my list and just you know specify adjust if the um, the subject of the email is not sufficiently a uh, a reminder. Uh, so it has mm -hmm. that link back to the email. I still really really like that. I don't use it for for everything. You know, some emails I don't need to have that email with me on my list so mm. I just go ahead and, and write it directly on the list but it's nice to have that uh, that ability I think for the most part it searches fine I like the way it groups the threads of, of emails mm. in there um, so so for the most part I'm fine um, but I've also been playing around with other email clients uh, the reason being that I'm about one day a week helping my uh, office neighbor <laughs> to mm -hmm. to uh, with some work on his his businesses and um, he is on the uh, the Outlook side of things, the Microsoft uh, 365. So it's given me a chance to also get some more in depth, uh, practical, um, you know, experience with these because it's it's been a while, which is both interesting for myself, but also good for having that awareness when we talk to to clients and do the setup uh, uh, workshops that you mentioned before in in GCD um, seminars. Um, so I've been playing with Outlook, Outlook on the Mac. Uh, still not still not a fan. <laughs> I think many people are, are really. They, they used to be very happy with it, at least on the uh, iOS side, but on the Mac, it's just, it's it's an old old thing that can only do half of what you can do on Windows. Uh, I had you mm. know one person in the seminar where everyone had Windows, and she was on her, her MacBook, and and she could clearly see that you know there were a lot of things that that you, that you just couldn't do on the on the Outlook side of things. So, it mm. it works fine for the things that it can do, but it's still still slow and, it, and the reason I'm saying that is also because the third email client that I'm using for a, a separate project is uh, Spark. Um, mm. I think it was one of our trainers, Carsten, that uh, that mentioned this to me, you know, a while back and I figured mm. I'd, I'd give this a try and it, it works very well. It's even faster than mail, um, doesn't do the nice uh, threading that I'm looking for. So from that perspective, I think Apple Mail is still better, but otherwise Spark is, is really nice, very quick to, mm. to work with. What sets this apart? Um, it's just the, I think the nice plain UI, uh, it's very much mm -hmm. focused on, on, on efficiency and, um, it has some basic functionality, the things that I need there. I think that that's the free version and you can get the fancy version with AI and all that. Um, mm -hmm. I just use the, the basic, uh, basic email client and it works, mm -hmm. uh, works very nicely. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, on uh, you know, uh, I mentioned reminders already. Um, of course, that's where I have my list as well. well. We'll get to that, but that's an inbox uh, for me as well. Same goes for memos. The memos app, standard app that you have on your iPhone, if you have an iPhone, uh, have on my Mac and mm -hmm. my and my iPad as well. Um, but you, when you say memos, uh, it's the voice recorder, right? Yes, yes. So it's called the memos app. Uh, but yes, it's the voice recorder exactly. Um, mm -hmm. So I have that integrated again with my action button. And lastly, I have my um, the Notes app. So again, the standard default mm -hmm. <laughs> Notes app on, on uh, mm -hmm. iOS and yeah, all Apple devices. Um, I still use that for capturing. So if we were, you know, we were we had some uh, agenda items to discuss before we started this podcast, mm -hmm. where did I capture that? Well, I created a new note and just made some, some quick notes in there. So that's an inbox for me as well. I have a separate mm -hmm. area in the Notes app, which is my my inbox. I'm still really a big fan of that. It's it's a simple thing, but I, you know, something I can capture in my, you know, most things I can cap capture mm. in my reminders app, uh, just you know, one line of text, or I can speak to Siri. Sometimes we're friends and, you know, we can <laughs> can make that work. Uh, but sometimes you just need more space. I need to draw something. I need to, you know, write some longer text. I need to create some bullets. I need to brainstorm some things. Um, notes mm -hmm. really well for, uh, works works really well for that. Mm. I think those are sort of the overall digital capture tools that I that I use. Mm. Um, where what what are you using these days? Well, um, I'm trying to get uh, become good friends with uh, the mail app, uh, but uh, because uh, a lot of the things that I do when it comes to potential clients and sales leads and uh, anything that has to do with sales and follow up of um, um, 
seminars and webinars and what, what we do towards clients. Yeah. We use Pipedrive, and that's an online, you know, it's a web app uh, inside your browser. So uh, I use that a lot. Um, the reason being is that because it has a, a waterproof GTD ask system when it's, you know, you, you, you're finished the meeting, you tick it off as done because you, you need to tick it off as done or it becomes red. So the, before you tick it off, uh, when you tick it off, it comes up an, um, a new box where what activities do you need to do after this? So do you need mm. to make a follow up mail? Do you need to write, um, you know, do you, do you have a to do to yourself or etc. So so it's it's a really good system that way. And just a little update on that front. I've had a meeting with uh, Pipedrive uh, regarding uh, creating. Um, there is some something called activities inside Pipedrive. For those of you who know that what that is, um, I'm talking to them. That I suggested that when they when you do your setup of the Pipedrive, you are tr walking through a you're going through a visit, uh, a setup visit, and, and one of the questions could be uh, in in Pipedrive you have activities. Are you familiar with getting things done methodology? You can you just uh, you know tick this box and, and click OK. Then there will be very GTD ask. So automatically it will be the default one be will be a waiting for, and then you have an agenda for, etc. etc. So you can use that as a way to to um, um, create a more GTD esque version of mm -hmm. of um, pipe drive out the box. We've done this manually, so we do have that in uh, in pipe drive in you know the the people who use it in the Nordic region. Um, so, but I I'm I, I a lot of my time is inside pipe drive when it comes to email, but I do have some emails that is you know personal and also something I would like to follow up outside that's nothing to do with, with the clients, then it becomes, um, then I use the mail app for that as you do. So you can drag and mm. drop an email or you can just go in Siri, go say, remind me of this and it becomes automatically, um, that email becomes a part of the, um, you know, sort of in the, your inbox in, um, in your uh, reminders yeah. app, which is my GTD task lists at the moment. Hmm. So, did I forget something? <laughs> yeah, so you have you had your Apple Mail, you have your your mm -hmm. Pop Drive. Um, I guess you use reminders as well, like me, because you said you used mm -hmm. Siri for that. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, yeah. No, I think we mm -hmm. yeah, I think we covered it. Okay. We can yeah. move on. To calendar. The, what yeah. do you use? Did you say that? Ah, uh, yeah. So we have the calendar set up as well. Um, so mm -hmm. I in 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 my setup, I also like to stick to the plain Apple calendar. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it really is uh, much of the same as last year. Um, no, one thing that I would highlight uh, in, in changing and, and using that, sometimes I still go in and use the Google web interface because if I need to move a meeting, I get the option to actually add a note to why am I moving this meeting or from mm. canceling one, I can add that note. I'd lose that functionality when I'm using a, mm. an external client like uh, like we have in the, in the, um, the Apple calendar client. Um, so sometimes I'll still use that, but for the most part, um, I will go in and just use the standard one. I have everything set up with my work calendar, home calendar. I have access to my wife's calendar, the kids' calendar. Um, one thing that has really been nice with the latest updates that have shown up is the uh, is the focus modes and how that impacts what calendars you see. So when I'm at work, mm. I see my work calendars. When I'm at home, oh. I see my home calendars. And that is actually a very helpful thing um, that has happened. Um, so you can can enable that and disable that, and I actually I really but, find but, value in that. But, uh, but 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 <laughs> how do you make sure that they don't collide? So if you oh, only yes, see I'll that, disable if I need to. Yeah. So so there's an option at the top, so you can always disable and enable it. So it'll say, you know, your uh, you know focus mode enabled, and then you can mm. disable that to see all cameras. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. so if okay, I'm because... at, you know, over the weekend, I'll, I'll, I'll focus on the, on the personal ones, of course. But, okay. you know, if I'm planning something for next weekend and I'm sitting at work, obviously mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I need to be able to see what's, what's in my personal calendar. Yeah, I haven't tried that. that sounds, yeah. um, but it is a good thing if the, you really want to, to make it, um, you know, the watertight seal between those two spheres of your life so uh, the mm -hmm. personal and, um, yeah, and the work. watertight but still easily accessible and that is yeah, yeah but it is watertight really you will not see your work mm -hmm. calendar unless you you yeah. distinctly go in and said yes i want to see my work exactly. calendar exactly. My, my only yeah. my only um 
I don't know. I, I know that as a GTD, I do not need to remember what's on my calendar. I just need to look through it on a regular basis to see what comes, what, what, what is coming towards me. But one of the things that I would uh, feel uncomfortable with is to do what you've done. And I'll explain why. <laughs> Maybe uh, other people there who feel like me will not feel um, normal. But it is, mm -hmm. I need to see both to make sure that I'm not planning something on top of the other. Like if I need to take in the, in the week, I need to do something. I need to go to a dentist or I have to take my car to the shop for repair. And then that will be on my personal calendar. Um, but it has to ensure that nobody, um, um, I have to see, can I do that? Two weeks from now, can I put something on my personal calendar uh, in the weekday? And um, not being able to see both makes it a little, hmm. Yes, I, it doesn't sit well with me. I just want to tell you. <laughs> Somebody else feel the same now. So, okay, you're not alone. No, but I recognize that from, you know, so um, if you look back a few years when Google came out with their... I don't even remember the name anymore, but they had those that they took their inbox and they split it into, you know, promotions and social things and newsletters. Yeah, yeah, and they, yeah. they sort of tried to help you with that. I disabled that right away. So, so uh, you know, it sounds like kind of that, that same reaction. Um, from this perspective, um, I don't need to, see, you know, I see my wife's calendar. I don't need to see that she, uh, you know, I have, I see it actually in the widget now. So it doesn't affect the, the widget. She has to pick mm -hmm. up some, uh, some, some um, packages that were sent to her. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not adding value for me to see that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so from that perspective, those are the kinds of things that I don't need to mm -hmm. see. Uh, play dates that the kids have, I would see them in my calendar if I did not have this uh, filter set up. Um, mm -hmm. So, so that is why I need to 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 sort of um, you know filter them out, or it's helpful mm -hmm. for me to to filter them out. Um, the other yeah. thing that is helpful is that they have integrated it with reminders now. So I can yeah. see the reminders that are due on a specific day or a specific time, mm. they show up in the calendar as well. And I was very, very sort of, when they first announced it, I was very, oh, I'm not sure I'm going to like this, um, but I mm. really do. Uh, that, that, mm. That's the result for me. It's really helpful. I like seeing it in the calendar that I have a reminder at five o'clock today or mm. tomorrow. I have, you know, thought that I could do these eight things and I'm not going to be able to do eight things. So it gives me sort of a, a chance to, to yeah. move things around and, and, and work with mm. it. So uh, it's something that I really like and it's made me actually stick even more to the to the, just the, the Apple calendar. Part. Good, good, mm. uh, good catch. What, what do you use then? <laughs> No, well, I use um, what I use and what I prefer to use is in a transition now because I've been uh, trying to, the more I've gone into the Apple Sphere with my, you know, the, the reminders, then you are dragged into notes, which is integrating, you know, good with uh, reminders. And then you have the calendar where you can drag and drop from reminders onto the Apple calendar, uh, things that you need to promote up. Um, but uh, I'm uh, I'm in limbo between uh, Google Calendar uh, created as a, as a, I use a Safari uh, create um, like you can create an app from Safari and I put Google inside that so I have a separate app as a you know as Calendar would be an app the Google Calendar will be an app um, and. Uh, uh, I l like the interface better and in the, um, in the Google Calendar, but it, uh, I don't know um, uh, how how that how well that works with um, and, and we know the integration are not as tight. You can't drag and drop things there. So, but it is the reason I'm using uh, I'm liking the, the that uh, better is because I interact with a lot of Outlook uh, users. PC people, Outlook users, and if I use my my um, uh, calendar, Apple Calendar, uh, if you want to share a link somewhere, you must be very specific where you put it because you have a URL field in the uh, um, Apple Calendar that doesn't exist uh, anywhere else outside Apple. If you create a URL there, people in uh, the Outlook world will not see your link. And yeah. not not even in the Google Calendar, it's visible. So you have to put it as a as a link in either the notes field or the place field. And uh, that's kind of like, yeah, what's going yeah. on there, Apple? <laughs> yeah, and this this uh, URL field does not sit well with me. So that's kind of my my 
subscribe. And, and I have found a very peculiar bug, and it all involves you, Loris, <laughs> and Espen. I don't know why, but we are on the same Google uh, system we, in the Vital Learning Group, and uh, uh, your calendar events pops up on my phone. <laughs> So I know mm, what yes, you are doing. You need to, yeah, you need to stay on top of what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't need to do that. I don't, really don't need to feel that. That's extra stress for me. But I understand you had a, a crucial conversation or mastering dialogue course, and it pops up on my phone as, uh, yeah. ah, now it starts. You're getting close. <laughs> I go, what? I did, yes. There was a certain medical company in Denmark where I was last yeah. week. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and uh, and that's uh, and, and and that is a bug I don't like, and I don't know if I solved it now, but uh, you may want to check if I because I think I am an administrator in this, and I turned off from my phone. Uh, do not receive reminders about activities from this calendar. Hmm. And uh, or I just want to make sure that you try <laughs> make that because I just recently did that because I, it annoyed me a lot. So if I did that, did it turn it off for you? Because you need no, notifications. I'm good. <laughs> You're good. Okay. I'm, I'm good. Um, I I, but but maybe I came across your blog earlier. Yeah, may, maybe I came because I uh, I also have that. And I for me, it showed up as a shared calendar, a calendar mm. that was shared with my Gmail account which would then show mm. up on my iPhone because it was shared that way. So by just not seeing it in the um, in the web app, that actually mm. disabled it for me. So if oh. you had, you know, if I go into Google Calendar with your login, if you're seeing my calendar, um, you know, um, at the same time that you're seeing your own, uh, mm. I just disabled that and I think that actually fixed it, but it was... I know, didn't do that for me. I, I turned it mm. off there and, I, you know, it kind of looks like... It is frustrating because you and Espen's calendar are the, the worst for me because <laughs> what happened is that uh, I, I would receive on my phone. I, I don't subscribe to I can't When I open the app, I don't see your calendar. I can mm. see it in the list of calendars I can choose to see because if I want to make a meeting with you, that's a good idea. And we share calendars just because of that. And, and then... Um, but, but what happened is that I don't see your calendar. I see your calendar the calendar in the list i deselect it so it's not selected i don't see the calendar in the calendar view but notification still shows up on my phone and it bugs me <laughs> 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 so but i think i found a, a just into the calendar and turn off notification for all activities in this calendar i'm not sure if that turned it off for you but if you're telling me it did not i'm happy <laughs> And we can both be in the Zen moment again. Oh. And so. our listeners learned a new thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think no. on my list we have two things left. Um, okay. We have the you know the the, the list uh, set up and, and and reference and support materials. I think those were sort of the the key mm -hmm. things still missing on 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 my checklist here. Um, but I think we already touched on much of it. Uh, reminders still mm -hmm. the, the system that I use very happy with it. Mm -hmm. Still have much of the same setup as last year, where I have a group now for home-related lists, group for work-related lists. I have a group for mm -hmm. errands lists and a group for, for, for some other lists that I that I need. Um, very straightforward. Still don't use tags. I have my projects list. I have my next actions list. They're not linked. Um, still works fine for me. Um, I will take some counseling after. The, <laughs> get, get ready. <laughs> I I know that you you'll want to have your your hashtag uh, set up uh, or the tag no, set up. No, 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 no. Uh, works works fine. Um, mm. I I have made some adjustments. I think I might have made them already last year. But you know, at the top where I think it defaults to six sort of uh, big tiles at the top left, where you have uh, today and planned and mm. completed and all that. Um, mm. Customizing those, but also customizing that I made my own smart list for what I want to see today. Because what I want to see on the today list is is overdue things and things that are due today. I don't want to see things that are due today and location specific because I have some reminders when I come home, I need to remember to do this mm. on you know two days a week. That shouldn't show up there. And I also don't want to see if I'm reminded about something at three o'clock today. I don't want to see are that. Are you telling me that you are easily distracted, Loris? <laughs> I'm saying that I'm very particular, uh, just like I'm, you know, hinting at with the pens and all that. Um, th yeah. This is actually something for me. I really want to just just see the stuff that I said. You know, Lars, mm. revisit this today. 
Uh, so, mm. so I actually had to make my own today list, um, mm. and, and that is then pinned to the top. So it's one of those tiles now. You can, mm. I, it wasn't obvious to me when I when I first came across it, but you can have your own lists at those uh, at the top there. Mm. So um, that's something that I have. Mm. Um, and 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 the remaining thing in, in list is, um, is is the agendas list. I still have that actually in notes. I don't mm. have that in uh, in reminders. I, for me, it's okay. um, I want to have that, that historical information. I want to, you know, what we discuss when. I want to be able to track that um, stuff that's ongoing. You know, we spoke mm. about the masterclass retreat. I have that as an mm. ongoing thing on the agenda list for you and me. Uh, what's mm. the status for today? Well, we're recording this mm. October 14th. So I would say on October 14th, we discussed this and this and this, mm. um, just so I have that. Um, and I don't need to mm. add it to the agenda list again. And I don't need to remember what we spoke about last time. Um, so for me, it's sort of that holacracy perspective on, on, on tactical meetings. Um, I still use that and that, that just doesn't work with, uh, for me at least, mm. with having lists in, uh, in reminders. Mm. Um, so I think that's that's the reminders and notes, and then then I have, um, like I said, um, and notes I'm is for reference the, material, right? And notes is reference as well. Yes, yeah. yes. So for my mm. agenda list, uh, support material and and, and reference. Um, but then I have my my setup in planner as well. That's been a lot of fun to actually play around with and and try to set up. Um, you know, like mm. I said, I'm working one day a week now in a in a Microsoft environment. Um, set up a new uh, business area, setting up so the, the process. Microsoft Planner uh, you're talking about. Yes, and yes, mm. and it's it's a lot of fun to to set that up. It was kind of a um, you know setting up a shared overview, looking into how should we then set it up, uh, what makes sense for these different buckets or different stages in the process. Mm. Uh, using the assignment, using the uh, collaboration tool, we have the labels, mm. we had uh, the due dates. Um, it was um, you know, a nice experience and it's, 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 it's very solid, very, very, um, you know, a very good tool and they keep improving it. So I'm, I'm very mm. happy with it and it was, uh, it was fun to work with. Mm. And yeah, lastly, if I should uh, wrap up, then, then, um, then my stuff in notes for reference and support. Mm. Um, Notes, still still great. If I have a client meeting, I go to notes. If we do a podcast, I have a template mm. in notes that I will set mm. up. If we are going traveling, we went to Cyprus a few years, weeks ago, uh, I have a checklist for the travels. If I do my weekly review, I have my mm. checklist in there. Um, I have my daily checklist in there, which I'm still loving. Um, it's mm -hmm. completely dependent on this now. Um, I, I mm -hmm. tweak it uh, frequently. It's a widget on my desktop, and it's the first thing I click in the morning, uncheck everything. No, okay, starting off with the calendar, going through that. Okay, next. Mm -hmm. Which of the inboxes do you want to empty first, or should I go to the list? So, yeah, still um, you know, big fan of that, uh, that daily checklist. It just, just helps, mm -hmm. me, helps me so much. Um, and I, yeah, lastly, I still use a bit of OneNote. Um, Again, being in the Microsoft uh, world, um, also for some of the uh, the meeting um, earlier meeting notes on the meetings that, that we have in in that business. Again, using the uh, mm. the holacracy template um, works uh, works really well as well for me. But overall, still very much in uh, in notes and uh, yeah, happy with uh, with it. Hmm. Um, and I think that's about it. What about uh, what about you? Yeah, just before we go to me, maybe mm -hmm. for those of you who, who heard the uh, world word holacracy and wonder what that is, there is an episode for that. I'm sure if I uh, ask Lars now, okay, he can put it in the notes that he will uh, mm -hmm. create a link to that episode or at least mention that. Happy to, uh, yeah. happy to point you in that. Actually, um, we have uh, have that interview. It's episode 101. 101. Okay. So... 101. So, um, no, I, I use uh, Apple Reminders as you do. Um, I'm not, I, I'm trying to keep it as simple as I can. And when, when I hear you talk about <laughs> planner, I say, yeah, <laughs> thanks. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Uh, but they are as simple as I can get them. Um, yeah. No, the, um, um, and when you talk about planner, Microsoft planner, I, I, I hear the, the, in your voice, there is a, ooh, like a small child get new toy. Absolutely. <laughs> so They're absolutely my, I must, sorry. I must admit that when you, when, when you first start talking about it, I, I smelled this, is it some, some productivity pornography going on here or is it really, <laughs> but I understand that it is not now, <laughs> it is genuine, um, you know, um, 
you are um, excited about technology, which is quite okay as long as it, as long as it doesn't hinder you of doing your work, which is some people I know, uh, myself included, before have been uh, doing. You are more interested in fiddling with your new toy than doing the work. Um, mm. And then if if that's you, then that's productivity pornography for you. Um, no, I used. Um, uh, the, the Apple reminders um, f as vanilla as I can without, but I use my tags for connection for um, connecting uh, the, um, active desired outcomes, work and, and personal to the next actions that I have and waiting for some agenda items. Uh, I keep my agenda for inside reminders. Um, that works for me. I don't miss the, the archive uh, bit that you feel you need. Uh, uh, I don't feel the need for that. Um, something that I, I don't know if I told uh, about, I talked about before, but I'm using now uh, something I just call a repeating tasks. Like I need to water my orchids. Um, every Sunday and remind in a reminder to to fertilize them when I when that's appropriate and and that is showing up every Sunday so it's a repeating tasks that it just show up on a specific time and I have a specific list for those so it doesn't bother me and I also yep, use I the that <laughs> yeah the repeat okay so the repeating task list is also my ticklers so if I I um, need to be reminded of something on a regular basis um, that shows up as well something i need to consider like um see if i have something i can talk about uh, yeah well we have we are selling the team book now in our um in our web shop uh i have are we or i have a tickler saying are we uh, sold out of the team book because then we need to because we have only one copy left as, as speaking uh, <laughs> of the team book signed by both David and Ed Lamont. So but after that, I have maybe 15 uh, books left for that's only signed by David, but I need to have that show up on my radar on a regular basis because I need them to 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 start the project on, um, uh, you know, uh, changing that um product in the in our web pages mm. um yeah and some some other ticklers also as well that that comes back and comes back to me on, on a regular basis so yeah when it comes to notes i have uh, two level of notes uh, we have active notes notes that are being used at the moment something i need to take um and and use I need on a you know, on a recurring basis. I come back to it. That leaves in notes, but things that are, are finished, like finished project notes or some information that I think, well, this is not going to be. It's go going to be valuable information I ne might need in the future, but it's not active now. It will become um, uh, uh, go into Dev and Think, which is my database for for that. It's easy, easily searchable, and it's easy to for me to find that. Um, and the reason I'm using that is the searchability. It is really good. So I can mm. find and retrieve things there. And it has an extra layer of, I feel like, security when it comes to documents and uh, notes I've taken on my Remarkable um, that it is on my local machine uh, here, um, not in the cloud. Uh, which makes me feel more comfortable if somebody should, because I have client sensitive materials there. So, um, and if you can break into, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, encrypted, um, database on an encrypted disc, uh, on a, on an encrypted software, uh, sorry, operating system. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I feel that more comfortable with that. And um, yeah, so so when things are finished, I will export them as PDFs and put them into to um, to uh, Devon Think for more long term retrieval. So it, it, because the notes app can get really clogged down with a lot of notes that's you know not um, well, they're not active at the moment. Um, if you are not cleaning, I don't know how often do you clean. Uh, I don't. Oh. 
Okay, <laughs> you're one of those guys. Yeah, <laughs> Lars. <laughs> yeah, no, that that that's why I put them there because I want to keep yeah. them. Um, so oh, I have. Okay. I'm just looking now. I have 465 notes. Uh, they're not. Okay. Uh, they're not going anywhere. Okay. Uh, I probably do have a little less than yours. How do you see that? Uh, in the size. Of, oh, okay. So I have 260. Uh, so, I, but I, that's, I haven't cleaned for a while, so, but it is, there is something there that is, uh, ongoing updated notes that I need for, for things and, uh, some things that can be cleaned, uh, away. So I will do that. And that's I'm not sure I understand what, what do you clean away? Because none of that is something I that I want to. I delete go. it. Okay. Because it, it it is it is it is every time you open it, it has to open a, a bigger and bigger database. At some point, it's going to go. Mm, it's going to be a little slow, and I don't have that happen to me. But I think it is around thousand or more notes. At least what I've heard in other in podcasts, they talk about notes that it starts to slow down when it gets mm. a big database. And, and there are things that you might not want to uh, to keep forever. Like I do some translation notes I want to share with my wife. And when I share that, then kind of like, okay, been there, done that, has no future value. Um, it can be deleted. So, um, yeah, that's me. Where are we mm. at the end or have you got some more? I think we are. Items? I think the, the last thing I wanted perhaps to do now, because you started talking about different tools. And I think one of the reasons also why I'm sticking to so many of the plain tools is, is what will hopefully happen going forward with all the, the AI stuff. And mm -hmm. again, being in the EU, um, the, the, I don't know if and when, what, sorry what we'll you. ever get and what we, yeah, exactly, <laughs> what, what we'll get and when it will work way, and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, but I'm, you know, uh, that, that is also part of the reason why if I stay within the ecosystem, then I mm. know that the AI will have access to it. I don't have high hopes as to how helpful it will be, but, you know, I'm imagining that there will be a few cases where there will be some suggestions or I will search for something and say, oh, actually, mm. you spoke about it in this meeting. Um, so, again, that's yep. part of the reason why I like mm. the history as well, uh, that it could perhaps go in and, and grab that. Um, mm. But uh, other than that, you know, looking forward, I don't see many changes. I'm, I'm incorporating some AI into my work, but not very mm. much, uh, less, less mm. than... No, probably as little as I as I would have thought. Uh, let's see if it, it changes in the future. But I don't mm. really, I don't really see much changing going forward. I'm happy with the setup that I have. If AI I can do some cool things, then I'll incorporate that. But otherwise, I don't see any major changes going forward. I don't know. Mm. What about what about you? No, when it comes to to AI, I am using more and more ChatGPT. Um, and that is just to as an ID generator for me. I'm, you know, I want to make, do this, and I'm trying to s s sit down and be creative. Sometimes I'm a little too tired, and I, I ask ChatGPT to come up with some starting points, and that's been really helpful for me. Mm. Um, I, I'm reminded of one of the things that I I would like to uh, maybe we will create a, a future episode on this topic because one of the things that I'm um, reminded of is that I had. A uh, few years back, uh, meeting with uh, some of the developer uh, or part of the developer team of the Microsoft To Do app uh, at the time, and yeah. they, one of the first thing they asked me, "What do you think about um, To Do and AI?" And uh, I said, ah, "Well, this is all it is." Long before we started hearing about ChatGPT and OpenAI AI and all the others, um, and I said, "Well, uh, and I think this is valid still." is that I do not trust an AI to make decisions for me. It can uh, advise me based on history, but I want to make the decision myself for what I need to get done. Like the clarifying, organizing, getting things done should always be uh, left to a human. If not, uh, if it is left to an AI, it might... Um, and and uh, let, let me put it this way. The AI don't have access yet maybe in the future to how you feel how are you today how's your physical and mental well-being um, 
uh, are you slightly depressed or are you happy uh, are you um, you know and 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 to have a ai decide what you should do um, it might not take into account all the things that all the variables that goes into the choosing as we do in the, the trifold nature of sorry not the trifold nature of work it's called um, and now it eludes me again. What's the name of the uh, context, time, energy, and priority? Uh, limiting criteria. Yeah. Limiting criteria. Thank you. So when you when you do that, that 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 is a way to 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 um, prioritize or choose what you need to good to do and feel good about it. And those those four, I'm 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 in you know the that where I am, uh, an AI can know what how much time I have. Uh, the AI can know how much energy I have at least for now they I don't know this and uh, then what has a priority now is maybe something in the future it can give an idea that you should probably work it on this but um, at the moment I don't think so but AI yeah, is um, is interesting I find it um, very interesting it is and it is um, you know people are trying to do different AI solutions that I find um, intriguing but i'm it's like we are waiting to see the the results um mm. i but with chat gpt 4.0 um i found it to be um i can ask fact based questions um and i've instructed it to be precise i think twice before you answer so it sometimes takes a little while before you can do that on the chat gpt you can say what what is always going to be underlying and when you do that it takes a little longer time to get the answer but it's it's like this um before it was you know this uh uh and i i'm, I'm not trying to offend someone but i'm sure someone has a an, a, an uncle that is uh, uh very uh, set in his ways and 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 knows everything all-knowing uncle i don't know if anyone have that and before this all-knowing uncle was a bit uh, has a bit, bit of a mental problems and was drinking at the same time so it was hallucinating a bit and that was such a year ago you can ask questions but you can't trust the answers to be absolutely correct and it can make up things but now it becomes more like the the all-knowing uncle, but uh, doesn't hallucinate as much. Uh, I always, when it is um, information that I need to make sure is correct, I always double check the facts and ask for where did you find that? Why do you think this um, question? So I uh, I get the answers. But um, um, I find it useful. So, but mm. what do you think, Lars? Do you think that AI can um, take over thinking? No, I'm, I'm with you part of the way, but I'm curious to see. So right now, my my watch knows the, how well my sleep was. Um, if we mm -hmm. can start getting those uh, those uh, blood sugar readings in there, it'll have a pretty good idea of, of how things are going. It won't know everything, and I'll still want to decide myself. But like you said, for, for help and inspiration, and mm -hmm. the more I see people, you know, connecting things and making it actually do things as opposed to just providing mm. information that's when mm. it starts to become quite helpful that you know draft those uh, you know here's here's my here are my thoughts on how to capture in gtd create a mm. blog post and and five linkedin posts with images and make them ready yeah. to post at these times you know when it starts to make it easy i think you can you can do much of those already mm. but but when that takes the next step and starts to become actions then then i think we'll we'll have some fun um, yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, let's see when that shows up. Yeah, I, 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 I have two things more to say about yeah, and one thing is that um, when it gets access to everything that you have on device on the iPhone, which you can have basically fill it up with almost anything that you have of information, and then it can retrieve. I talked to Lars sometime last year about this and that. What what did we talk about? And it can then retrieve all emails, all my next actions, all my notes um, from that and show me a resume of, of that topic. And that is hugely beneficial. Um, mm. But and um, but when it and, and the second thing is that I think uh, yeah, I can be beneficial to coach you into creating good next actions, make decisions on your own mm. on what's your next actions going to be, but just asking questions. So what's on your mind today? Well, I am 
my car. Yeah, okay, what, can you be more specific? What, what about the car? I need to change tires. Okay, do you have anything you need for doing that? Uh, and then you can continue and then you will at some point get some um, a small project maybe and a decide, uh, sorry, with a decide outcome and then a next action to co uh, connected to that. But um, but I think it could help you think. It could be replacing you and me, but it won't be so nice as you and me. <laughs> you'll miss the accents, right? <laughs> yeah, you'll miss the accents and, and, and uh, yeah. No, but, um, and of course, we will not be with you. So maybe we should create an AI version of ourselves coaching you. And uh, you have 118 an episodes to, to create a, a Morton and Lars AI and see, yeah, see what yeah. it uh, recommends. We'll have to try that uh, maybe sometime next year. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we will see. Okay, I will, we, we, this is probably the longest running episode ever. It's at 105 <laughs> minutes it now. So. <laughs> So <laughs> let's uh, let let's let's wrap up. Um, and yeah. um, I always start that part with a quick reminder that we talk about something that happens on a yearly basis, which is called GTD Summer Camp. Mm -hmm. We don't have a place to point yet. It's always gtdsummercamp.com, but that will point you to the 2024 event. We are mm -hmm. working on the 2025 event. We have some ideas already. The organizing group has convened, and we have some ideas that we are, are working on when it comes to dates. We already have um, mentioned these dates earlier, but, but we don't know. We haven't confirmed them yet, so I don't want to throw them out there. There just yet i'm mm. in touch with the uh, the venue right now to make sure that we mm. have the, the the right place and the right uh, dates but mm. it's hanging out with gcd years hanging out with martin hanging out with myself it's a lot of fun um just an inspirational weekend um so so i hope to see you there and again as soon as we have some uh, finalized dates and some more content to share then of course we'll mention mm. that in a future episode um we also always remind you to head on over to vitallearning.e you because that is where you'll find all the information about what we do on a daily basis when it comes to getting things mm. done the different levels of seminars crucial conversations uh for accountability for mastering dialogue influencer everything um go over there have a look you'll find your way to the different country websites where you can also reach morton and myself um if you don't find our information there podcast at bytelearning.dk will reach both of our email inboxes and lastly, if you are outside the Nordics Plus, then head on over to CrucialLearning.com to find your local partners. Or, or GettingThingsDone.com. True. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and GTDFocus.com <laughs> if you want to have a coach in the Americas and, uh, the, and Canada. So, and uh, just a little um, reminder for people, um, some of you have already done that, which is highly appreciated. Um, if you would like to connect with us on uh, LinkedIn, you may. Uh, just send us a um, um, message when you, uh, when you um, connect and mention just the word GGD, and that's enough for me. If you are GGD interested, uh, I, I will accept your request. So find us on uh, um, on LinkedIn um, with Lars Rotskill Hendriksen and Morten Rövik Rovik, you will find us. I'm sure you are intelligent beings, so connect. <laughs> or you can and just use the links in the show notes. That that is also yeah, that that is also not a, a stupid idea. You are absolutely correct, Lars. <laughs> um, and the reason you should connect with us is just it's cool to hang out and get to know people and follow follow each other. If you post something, we will probably see it and if we like what you post we will probably like it and uh, maybe you will we will post or not maybe we will post things about getting things done you that you might like so it's um it's a win-win for all so connect with us on linkedin and we are at the end aren't we loris i think so yeah so this is the place where i will say stay safe and stay productive bye 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 everyone